Hello everyone, welcome back to Flange Master Tell. I'm Graham, your Flange Master of Tells, and as always, I hope you all are remembering to bring a towel and flanging it up. Today we're going to be talking about the PS5 teardown video that got posted, doing some analysis and all that good stuff, and before we flange on into that, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down there, hit the bell for notifications so you can always stay up to date with awesome and always improving content from Flange Master Tal. And with that, let's flange on into it. So... Going to be no audio, of course, just... Uh, captions slash subtitles uh the dude's speaking in japanese so you know unless you speak japanese wouldn't really you'd need captions anyways it's really cool that they're doing these teardowns it's kind of a new thing really awesome of them to do it and uh here we go yes that is a playstation 5 and yes it is freaking huge and chonky um it's Consoles are becoming more and more like just mini limited PCs every generation. No surprise to me. Um, yeah, it's uh, once we get into it, we'll see that like a lot of the space is for basically motherboard and cooling. Of course, that's to be expected. Uh, really awesome. I mean, you know, USB ports and all that isn't like too interesting, but it is awesome to know that they're going to be like high speed USB, uh, I believe that would be 3.1 ports. Interesting to note they're still using the same AC power connector that doesn't include a ground. Don't know why there's no ground. Ge I mean, I'm not an electrical engineer, but generally it seems better to have a ground, but it's not always necessary, obviously. I like what they've done with the stand that comes with it um really cool it's just one screw comes out easy has a little spot to store your screw so you don't lose it also has like a little cover for the screw hole so if you remove the stand just because whatever reason you want to remove the stand you can cover up the screw hole everything looks pretty that's a really cool little design thing they've done there i really like that very cool and like that you can like you know completely save the screw you can clip the stand oh it's so you can put it sideways oh, okay for some reason i derp watching this and i missed that little bit so you could put it sideways um the panel removal freaking amazing that it's like nice and easy to remove and i totally predict that people are going to remove these side panels take measurements of all the clips and everything and we're going to wind up with custom side panels that you can buy, which is great because I don't like the white two-tone design. As soon as I can get a D-brand skin or any skin or replacement panels, it's done. Hopefully Sony will also do their own panels, but we should move on to um, the fan here, which it's a very interesting design. Oh, wait, before we get to the fan, they've got these dust catchers that you're supposed to be able to vacuum out. We'll have to see how good they actually work, but it's a good idea in concept. Not sure how that'll work out in practice, but um, it, it's good thinking, even if it doesn't work out that well in practice. The fan, though. Oh, we're not even at the fan yet. I want to get to the fan. So they've got their uh, NVMe SSD slot. Should be more or less pretty easy to access for people that want to um, add that upgrade in. Kind of cool that they've got the, like, PlayStation shapes on the uh, sticker there. That's the sticker that's supposed to like be able to tell if you've tampered with it for warranty, but that's illegal in the US. Um, so those little like vented brackets are almost certainly to help direct airflow. Very interesting. Lots of clips. It seems like they've done their best to make this as easy to assemble and disassemble as possible. That fan is a freaking chonk. Like, that's a very chonky fan and probably a very effective, efficient fan. Um, so far, the word is that the PS5 cooling is very quiet, which is probably in large part due to that very interesting fan. I wonder what the actual, like, static pressure and airflow um, uh, CFM ratings are on that. But as we take it apart, it looks like a lot of this was made to be very easy to disassemble and assemble. And uh, after doing content on the fully, uh, excuse me, the fully automated manufacturing of the PS4, which certainly they've used a bunch of that, what they've learned with that on the PS5, why wouldn't they? It's see, I, I can't help but wonder if a bunch of how this is designed to uh, be put together and come apart 
was done with fully automated manufacturing in mind to try and make that as easy as possible after what they've learned with the PS4. And um, referencing back to that content, or we'll, we won't talk about, what's interesting is on the uh, e EMR shield there, there's a heat sink and heat pipes on that. Um, I don't know. Let's pause for a second and go back a little bit uh, so we can slow things down here. So where's that um, electromagnetic radiation shield? There we go. So that he little heat sink there, I'm not quite sure what that's specifically for. But as when he removes it, uh, we do get an interesting look. Oh, got to just find that specific shot. The backside, if we can get there. There. So there's some like heat sink, heat pipe kind of stuff going on. Oh, okay. It's probably for the uh, voltage regulation by the looks of it. Because that would that little silver bank over there, that's probably um, the voltage regulation. And that's probably what that for is for. Because you can see all the copper on the back there, which is, and that would be a heat pipe there. So that'd be the copper where it takes the heat in from what I'm assuming is the voltage regulation moves it over to the top. And there's no direct airflow as far as I can tell from the fan, but there'd be enough airflow and stuff going in to presumably uh, cool down the VRM there. Uh, we'll keep going. He's just pulling off cables. So anyways, the point I was... Okay, so those might actually be capacitors. There's what looks like um, some sort of thermal paste or padding. There's the more squarish things are almost certainly VRMs. I mean, the more round things are probably capacitors, although I could be mistaken. Again, I'm no electrical engineer, just grew up with one for a father. Um, but one thing I'm noticing that I'm kind of have some mixed feelings about is this retention bracket. We'll have to see how good it is, because that's what helps hold the um, like CPU and the heat sink on the other side and all that. And I just I question it. We'll have to see how good it is. There's issues with like the X clamp design with the PS3 and Xbox 360. Um, no spring mount tension, which is interesting. Just very interesting. And then it seems like I just I'm not I'm not sure. We're gonna get, have to get our hands on it to get more details. You can see the liquid metal on it. Although it's interesting, they cut to a picture where the like liquid metal holding device is not on there anymore so you can see the actual like die and everything so yeah yeah so the stats are what they are that's the die it's interesting to note that they've got a kind of a higher clock speed than nvidia uh gpus but that clock speed only goes so far um, a lot depends on uh, multi-core processing with GPUs, so yeah, that's not necessarily a big deal. Bunch of tiny capacitors on the back, so each one of those um, GDDR6 uh, RAM chips there, 2 gigs each, times 8 chips. Now it's interesting that they've chosen to go for a fully integrated internal SSD instead of having a removable unit. It probably helped them save on cost, but my concern with that is it's going to wind up backfiring with cost. If there's anything wrong with the internal SSD um, or it just wears out because SSDs do wear out in a different way than mechanical hard drives. Now you've got to replace the entire motherboard to replace the SSD and then potentially that could make backing up or restoring or um saving data if there's any sort of issues that could become more difficult so i wouldn't be surprised if that's a cost saving measure that actually winds up coming around to bite them in the ass a little bit and then when it comes to the size they keep saying 825 gigabyte but they've not been specific if that's the total size or if that's the size after system allocated um storage because if you go to the ps4 and the ps4 pro 825 is exactly what you have left after uh, all the system allocated space. 
Uh, so for all we know, that's 825 free after what's allocated to the system. And they're just telling us that because that's actually more accurate because that's the usable space. But they're not being specific. So it's unclear if we if that's the total size and then the system allocated space comes off of the 825 or if that's 825 is what's left after what's allocated to the system. So and there's a leak that may or may not be fake. Um, it's been put into question that was showing 600 some left after system allocated. I don't trust that leak. Uh, I got to wait until something more trustworthy comes out to really commit either way. But it's I've just been sitting here like, OK, so what's the deal with this? Can you guys be more specific on that? But we'll just we'll have to wait to find out for sure, apparently. I'm surprised no one that's gotten a PS5 in advance has given us details. Maybe they're not allowed to. Oh, quick note here. So that is very fast, 5.5 gigabyte per second raw data transfer rate for an SSD. That is fast. But at the same time, current Gen 4 SSDs have meter beat that speed. Just the way they market, they try and market this stuff like it's better than PC. Not, not necessarily so directly, but they definitely try and like highlight the biggest numbers they can and kind of frame it as like, oh, this is so amazing. And, you know, I'm not saying it's not amazing, but it's just, it's not amazing as they try and frame it there to be. And there's PC parts that have already exceeded a lot of the stuff. So just to kind of put things a bit more in perspective on that, um, very interesting. Like when it comes to the Kraken and all these like custom things, we'll have to see how good they really are. Cause all this like, you know, the stuff they're doing could be done on PC if just, you know, they got PC hardware people, got more coordinated about it. Um, anyways, so uh, some of that stuff's already coming to PC and it will in the future. But anyways, to the uh, liquid metal. So I find this very interesting. It looks like this whole arrangement, like it's like this piece that seems to go on top of the die and it seems like this whole piece going on top of the die is in large part meant to keep the liquid metal from flowing off of the die because that's a big problem with liquid metals because it's literally liquid metal it's like gallium and some other things and it can react with other certain metals um so with the liquid metal it can literally flow off of the die and it's um geez my brain what's the term um it's conductive. That's the term I was looking for, conductive. Okay, so it's conductive. My brain sometimes, anyways. So liquid metal is conductive because it's literally liquid metal. This means if it flows off of the die and you know enough gets between two capacitors or multiple capacitors or whatever, then it could short things out, cause a bunch of problems and like really short things out because it's literally liquid metal. It'll like form like a very electrically conductive uh, connection when that's possible. So I feel like this whole rigging here on top, which is not normal on uh, just dyes in general for cooling, like this whole extra rigging, not normal, not standard, very unique and interesting. I'm pretty sure that's there pretty much exclusively to keep the liquid metal from flowing off and being a problem. And they probably put a lot of research and development into figuring this out. And it's probably something other companies are going to um, imitate to be able to add liquid metal to, let's say, laptops or just to have liquid metal as a thermal interface material so that it doesn't flow off and create these kind of problems. Because that's a big issue with liquid metal. Another issue with liquid metal is after so long, it does dry out and need to be replaced. It doesn't last necessarily as long. Well, regular thermal paste does too. Like all thermal paste has a limited lifetime. I've had thermal paste left on for years and not had an issue so it depends on the paste it depends on variables but it doesn't last forever and that's the main point and especially so for liquid metal so there might be an issue in a year or two where people's thermals suddenly get crazy and really hot and then they're like oh shit i gotta do redo the liquid metal and that becomes a big thing 
So we'll have to see how this goes, but just in general, the that they're using liquid metal is just like, whoa. There's some mentions of this earlier, and I didn't I didn't really think they're actually using liquid metal, but apparently they are. That's really freaking cool. And it's very reflective too. But yeah, the liquid metal is very interesting, very cool. Definitely helps a lot with the thermals and the heat sink, which look at all that copper. That's like a big copper plate. And it seems like that uh, all the black material around it is probably kind of like trying to gasket seal it somehow. And it goes against the foam on the piece it meets onto. Like, look at all that copper. That's like a very... But the copper is there to just help this heat get distributed. Lots of heat pipes. So there's four there. And then there's like a whole crazy cluster of them. Like four there and six here. So at least 10 heat pipes on this heat sink. Which is, that that's a lot of heat pipes. Nice dense um, radiator fins. Uh, well designed heat sink. Or at least um, very thickly designed heat sink. Um, it kind of seems like in some ways it kind of took just a thermal mass approach because more thermal mass means it's easier to transfer more heat more quickly. So they, it is, I almost want to say they kind of just brute forced it a little bit. But hey, if it works, it works. And apparently it might be working better than the Series X cooling solution, which uh, I... It would be quite surprising if that actually turns out to be the case. And I think their main focus here was making it quiet. Um, it's very interesting how the power supply is just like one easy to swap out unit. Very cool of them to do so. Like lots of like clips and stuff. So I think I got sidetracked from the point but uh, I meant to make earlier. But with the fully automated manufacturing, one of the biggest hurdles with that was routing cables and plugging cables in, especially these like thin, fragile uh, ribbon cables. And just how the way things are laid out and everything flanges together makes me think they probably do have a mostly or completely fully automated manufacturing process like they do for the PS4, which it would it's basically what made the PS4 profitable for Sony at all or at least a huge component of what made the PS4 profitable for Sony is the fully automated manufacturing. And it just, I mean, why would they ignore all what they learned and not apply it to the PS5? Of course they're going to apply it to the PS5. So just the way cables are positioned and all that, it, I, I really get the feeling that this is all or mostly fully automated, using fully automated manufacturing. The way things clip together, the way it's like these, you know, easy to put together and take apart discrete pieces. Like, look at everything we have here. This is all like, you know, this is a really easy teardown. And, you know, uh, even if the SSD goes bad, yeah, that sucks that you have to replace the full motherboard. But that's not hard to do. It's just kind of one of the most expensive parts there will be to replace. But, like, you look at that heatsink. Holy crap. That is like one chunk thick heat sink they got going on there like once you see it like in relation to everything else it's like yeah that's half the that's literally half the reason this thing's so big between the motherboard and the heat sink and if we look at the motherboard there's like they could size that motherboard down a whole bunch if they felt like it but i think they mostly wanted to accommodate the heat sink and they probably built it around the fan and the heat sink and the cooling solution and fully automatic fully automated manufacturing were probably the key starting points and that's pretty much it like you said that's all the parts and like that's like a very reasonable teardown and uh, amount of parts left the, the dust catcher does not guarantee wait what did what did it say there the dust catcher does not guarantee the hardware clogging from dust uh I mean, it's kind of funny that they have to say that. That should be a given, but anyways, people are people. And that includes me. And that is that. So, oh, the hotkeys. There we go. So that's the teardown. Um, definitely learned a bunch, but until we actually 
get our hands on one. There's only so much we information we can derive from watching a teardown. Um, in some ways, it opens up some new questions as much as it answers a whole bunch of questions. Definitely found out pretty much w most of what we want to know about the cooling and how that works. And the, uh, I feel like they just kind of brute forced the cooling, wh which is fine. It works. Apparently, it's working than uh, the Xbox Series X design which uh, apparently gets quite hot, but I mean, we're going to have to wait and see until we get this, all these items in our hands, tear it down for ourselves. And yeah, definitely excited for that to flange up uh, next month. Hope y'all are excited too. Definitely very excited for these new console releases and everything flanging. Also excited for new content that's flanging up here. Got a bunch of stuff in the works and on tap. Um, flanging up, uh, move the channel, various little details. So you might have to resubscribe if you were subscribed to the old channel, but not to the new channel. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that. And yeah, as always, flange it up and remember to bring a towel. Bye.